The main cultures of the world always remind us of the sacred. Come, I want to show you an ancient Shinto shrine, uh, which is here in New York, and there, which is something like, I would say, a reminder of uh, uh, the sacred. Uh, it's guarded, like all shrines, by two guards here and uh, reminds us of those parts of us that are mostly invisible. The soul, God, love, <laughs> connection to our ancestors. All these things uh, cannot be seen with our eyes but they very much can be felt if we polish a little bit the mirror of our heart. At that time, when the dust of the many urgent but uh, superficial things disappear, uh, there is uh, a longing left, a longing for these uh, uh, invisible fundaments of our existence. I think we should not uh, only stumble about some shrine and then remember it like uh, we do or stumble into a, an orthodox church or a temple or a kirtan or so on. We should uh, cultivate rem a remembrance of uh, God on a daily level. For instance, today I looked out of the window, I was in New York and I saw from a, where I was staying down 25 stories and saw people like ants moving around. And I remembered mm, Krishna's statement, I am in the heart of all beings who move in this body as if on a machine of material elements. I am in the heart and give the inspiration. Or oh, the other day we walked past a uh, a uh, field that was blooming with a uh, yellow rap seed. And I remembered Krishna's dhoti. At another time, uh, there was a lightning flash from a cloud bank coming in West Virginia. And I could remember uh, the blue colored Syam Sunda Krishna embraced by the lightning colored Radharani. Practicing remembrance of Krishna is important because this will replace all the various thoughts that pull us towards mundane uh, things, that pull us into the small mind. Remembering Krishna will immediately bring us into the big mind. And when we breathe in the big mind, we only feel relief, absolute relief and the feeling of having arrived in the perfect place.